What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be tackling the gearing on my new Dana 60 front axle. If you haven't already been following along, I am doing a one ton swap into my Jeep Wrangler JK that I have right here behind me. That is terrible lighting. But there is a Jeep back here, I swear. Uh, if you've already been watching the channel, you know that I have been on 35s, I have stepped up to 37s, I did long arms, I did everything in preparation for going to some uh, one ton axles. Now it is time to continue on and this is one of the last steps is doing the gearing. I've already done the 14 bolt rear end axle so if you guys want to see that one I'll link that one up here for you guys but today is going to be specifically the Dana 60 front axle. I will specify that this video is going to be a little bit longer than most of my usual videos because this is going to be a little more in depth on how I'm doing this. It's not going to be a step by step because that one, um, I am going to leave up to Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets. I have actually watched his YouTube videos on both the two axles so many times on how to do it, and I am ready to tackle this. I'm going to make sure and link that one in the description below for you guys so you can check out how to do this step by step after you watch this video. Let's get started. So the first part of the building is the unbuilding. Got to take off the differential cover. We got to take the pinion out. We got to take the gears out. We got to take all the caps out. Got to get rid of all the old so we can put all new back in. Before pulling the bearing caps off here, uh, take note of the orientation. We got this like extra bump on the outside away from the differential. So that is something to remember on both sides. You also want to reinstall it with the right side on the right side and the left side on the left side. So I'm going to mark it here. I'm going to be RU for right upper so it goes back in as a right upper and then LU as the left upper. There's two ways to get the differential out of the case. There is a case spreader which you like strap on and it literally stretches the case out and spreads it. Or you can take a big old pry bar and just pry this thing on out. It is preloaded so it is stuck in there pretty well but it's not stuck in enough that you can't get it out. It's an added expense to get a case spreader. They don't rent them at a local auto parts store so I'm just gonna pull this thing on out. Zapping off the pinion is gonna be a one and five sixteenths socket. That is a big socket, not quite as big as the, uh, the rear at the one and a half. But as you can see, this is gonna be spinning super easy. So you wanna hold it on with something like a pipe wrench. Hold on, play, hold in place with this while you spin it off. Um, highly suggest using an impact gun. To get the pinion out, we're just gonna knock it out. Um, Or I guess I'm just going to push it out. I don't know if it's supposed to be able to push like that. Well, normally uh, you knock it out with a punch or you just knock it out with a hammer if you're not going to reuse it. I'm not going to be messing this up because somebody might actually want it. Let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, if you want this and I still have it, it's yours. <sighs> Mistakes were made. I balanced the axle on the jack stands perfectly and then I forgot to counter for the weight that was coming out of it so it fell over backwards on itself. Now it is on the ground off the jack stands. Oops. Gotta get this thing back up on there and uh, then we start pulling out all the bearings, all the bushings, all the seals, all the races, everything like that. Uh, I'm gonna take a punch. You don't want to be messing up any of the seals on the inside. Brass is a lot more soft than steel, so it will not scratch and gouge it. Now that the axle is completely stripped out, all bearings, all races, it is time to start building all the new stuff. We got the zip locker from Yukon, we got the master install kit, and we have all gears. So everything in the front is going to be all Yukon, which is going to be awesome. First thing you got to do is uh, look at the instructions. There are certain ways all the bearings and all the shims are actually going to sit in here. So I know one side of this, um, the shims sit on the outside of the bearing next to this uh, air manifold. I never know what to call this thing. The air manifold, basically where the air goes in for the locker. The other side is going to be shims underneath the bearing. For that side, I'm going to make a setup bearing. That's something I learned from uh, Ben on JK Gear and Gadgets. You get one of the old bearings and you kind of hone out the inside. So it's kind of like a, a temporary 
bearings, so you can slide it on and off uh, pretty easily. We're gonna start pressing in all the bearings that we can, all the races that we can, before we start installing the rest of it. For the carrier and the ring gear here, uh, they are built with very, very close tolerances, which is a good thing, but assembling it is a little bit more difficult. There's a trick. If you throw the ring gear in the oven for about 30 minutes at 250 degrees, and at the same time, throw the uh, carrier into the freezer, then it slides right on. You do not want to use the bolts to tighten it down. That is very bad. I do put a bolt in uh, just to kind of line up the ring gear, but I do not thread it whatsoever until it's fully seated. And then once it's fully seated, I throw another bolt on the other side just to hold the ring gear on, and then uh, finger tight those things so the ring gear stays down. They will require some red Loctites, so don't forget uh, to pull those back out after the other bolts are in and Loctite them. This next part is gonna be a little bit tricky. You gotta torque down every single one of these ring gear bolts to 110 foot-pounds, but you gotta hold it so you can actually get them tight. I have it uh, hooked up to my vise right here, but I put a pair of old gloves in there to kind of protect it from uh, being scratches overly tight and gouging into it. So that should work. Hopefully it's tight enough. Crisscross as you're tightening them up, like a star pattern and let's do it. Oh, dang. So that was a little more difficult uh, having to hold on to it and tighten it at the same time, but managed to get them all tightened down. Now that the ring gear is attached to the carrier, it's time to start pressing on the new bearings. The pinion side of it, so the tooth side of it, the bearing gets pressed on first and then the shims sit over the top of that. The opposite side, all the shims go underneath it. We're going to have a temporary bearing for that one. So it's a little bit easier to try to go back and forth and getting this thing lined up exactly perfect. We are going to make a setup bearing. So we're just going to terminal out the inside of this so we can slide this on and off as we're setting things up. I do highly suggest uh, you take an old bearing and cut off a raise so then you use this as your press to press it on down. You don't want to push on the cage itself of the new bearing and just destroy that bearing. So use this guy on top of the new bearing on the race on the inside and just press it on down. All right, now that I got my temporary race and the temporary bearing, it is time to start setting up the pinion. Notice between the two pinions here, the uh, old one sits a lot lower because it uses a crush sleeve. Now we are not reusing a crush sleeve because the new one does not fit with one which is totally fine because I do not want to use a crush sleeve anyway. So we're going to use shims on top of this thicker part here. And we're just going to stack shims up as we go to increase and decrease all the preload. That's what we're looking for right now is the preload. Measuring out the old baffle, which is completely shredded. It is two thousandths of an inch, or sorry, 20 thousandths of an inch. Same thing as this guy. So we're just going to call that a wash. Looking at our old pinion, we do have a few shims on there, so we're going to pull those off, we're going to measure them, and we're going to use that as a basis to uh, base off our new one. Now the old one used to have the shims behind the bearing. The new one, we're going to put the shims in front of the bearing next to the baffle. That's going to be a little easier to access it and uh, add some and take some off a little bit later. So let's measure these out, see what it is, and then uh, we're going to match it just kind of as a, a basis to see where we're at. Looks like the old shim is 20 thousandths of an inch. So uh, that is pretty easy to work with right there. 20,000 plus 20,000, so uh, about 40 thousandths of an inch is what we're gonna be starting our kind of uh, jump off from. So let's throw this in the housing and let's see how close we are. First thing before we start setting up the pinion, we gotta press in the new bearing race on the, uh, the yoke side. I had the race sitting in the freezer for the last uh, about 24 hours now, so it is nice and cold. I'm gonna take some map gas, heat up the inside of the pinion here and I'm gonna see if I can get this to heat up nice and even so this just slips right on in. Now it's time to start putting everything back in. The new uh, pinion here, I'm gonna lube up a little bit. Doesn't need a lot. Don't wanna go in dry. Ten. For the setup race, we're gonna be putting in this inside here. We're gonna take all of our shims. Now there's gonna be two sides of it. There's gonna be one that's kind of uh, raised. It is gonna go towards the uh, yoke side. Then you got the shims that go on there and then this goes right in front of it. And just like that, because it was so easy that would uh, slide this inside and race in, it's because we already uh, hollowed it out a little bit, or uh, ground out the outside. 
So now we're going to set the new pinion in. That's going to sit just like that. Now on the, uh, the yoke side of it, we're going to throw some shims in there. Since we had a crush washer before, now we're going to shims. We're going to have to guess. We're going to, this is basically sitting the preload on there of how hard it is to spin it uh, with an action, with like a gauge. I'm going to show you guys the gauge here in a second. So I'm going to start off by putting 50 thousandths of an inch. So that's kind of a good middle area to start off with. I'm going to slide this on there, slide the bearing in, and then we're going to test out the, uh, the preload on there. So I can already tell that this is way too tight. I can't spin it one-handed. I have to spin it uh, two-handed. So that means that it, there's not enough shims on the back side of the, uh, the yoke side, the outside. So I need to pull this back off, add some shims, and then uh, try it again. All right. After a lot of trial and error. That is why we did the setup bearings. I probably did it 10 times trying to get the right shim exactly perfect on here. And I'm going to use this guy here. It is an inch pound indicator. <laughs> indicator. It is an inch pound indicator telling you how much effort it takes to spin something. Three quarters inch to a half inch to a three inch drive to a quarter drive. So this works. You want to test how much resistance while it's moving. The first initial resistance to get it moving is a little higher. That's not the resistance we're looking for. We're looking for the actual moving resistance on here. For the spec on this, it needs to be within 17 to 30 inch pounds. This right now is sitting exactly at 20. And that is each direction. Very important, make sure it's both directions. So on the gearing side, it goes as follows. You're gonna have the bearing, you're gonna have the shims, then you're gonna have the seal housing, and it all sits on just like that. I'm not gonna put the actual seals on there quite yet. That's That'll be saved for the very last step because that sucks trying to get this thing on and off with those seals on there. And then we're gonna flip the other side. Yeah, the shims go on underneath that bearing, which is why we got that setup bearing that we could just slide on and off easy. With a new temporary bearing set up and ground down, ready to go, and now it's time to start working on the shims. What I measured off the old carrier when I pulled the bearings off, on the uh, gear, sh gear side, so the pinion side of it, I got uh, 30 thousandths of an inch. And then on the non-gear side, so the opposite where the bolts are at, got 55 thousandths of an inch. So that should put me at about 85 thousandths of an inch for uh, preload. What I'm gonna do is copy that with all the new shims and I'm gonna put them on. On the gear side, we're gonna put the shims between the bearing and this guy right here, which is that like, uh, air baffle, manifold, whatever thing that spins on there. The air seal, I think it's an air seal. Let's call it air seal. The other side, they go behind the bearing, which is why we had to uh, make that the setup one. So for this next part, there's no graceful way about it. We gotta take the carrier and literally drop it into the differential housing. And if it slides in super duper easy, we need some more shims and we need to uh, make that preload a little bit bigger. If it doesn't drop in easy and we have to smack it with a uh, rubber mallet, depending on how hard we smack it is how uh, much preload. It's supposed to be spread out with a case spreader, so uh, if it's in a little bit easier than the preload when you let it go, and the, so it doesn't fall out. Since I don't have a case spreader, drop it in and smack it with a mallet and see how far in and how easy it is. Way too easy. One thing I almost forgot to do before buttoning it up is drilling a hole for the ARB air, uh, airlines coming out. Whoops, I already checked it out. Basically, I'm gonna drill right between these two holes here and uh, tap that. So, yeah, that was almost a whoops. Okay, and uh, there we have it. Got everything in here. Check the backlash on here and everything looks good. The backlash is currently sitting at eight thousandths of an inch. According to the book, it was six to 10. So that is perfectly right in there. It may change ever so slightly once we uh, put all new stuff back in. I'm talking about like a thousandth of an inch. 
now that everything is set, everything is measured out, it did take a few blows of the hammer to get the preload right, it is time to pull everything back out and then replace those temporary items with permanent things. Hopefully, it'll be set and we'll be good to go. Once everything's all redone, we do have to retest everything just to make sure, just in case. And hope, <laughs> hopefully we're good. With everything dialed in, the backlash is set. Uh, I have all the permanent bearings, all the permanent races. Everything is in, all the shims are in. Everything is measuring out perfect. So the last final thing are the seals. We have this seal that goes on side of this air seal here. There goes my shims. So I'm really hoping that uh, this one wasn't as bad as the, uh, the one for the rear axle. That one was super duper tight, super, uh, super difficult to get in there. But you're gonna take this and we are gonna lube it up. Lots and lots of oil here. And they're gonna sit inside of these little channels here. Uh, there's two of them, one on each side. Make sure they're all clean out. <coughs> and they just sit right on in. There we go. There's one. Ah, it's so slippery. <laughs> there we go. And now it should sit right on top like a glove. So now let's take this guy back there and do the final install. All right, so now that we can check the backlash one more time, we checked everything one more time, it is time to paint the gears, and we're gonna see just how on point all the measurements were. <laughs> I hope I did it right, because that is a lot to take apart and redo. There we go, we got three fronts, three backs. I'm gonna rotate this up so it's a little easier to spin it, and let's see, uh, let's see what that pattern is. And it does require some tension on here, so you gotta hold on to it and get some tension and make it really mesh with those teeth. All right, this is a little hard to see. Everything is looking super good on here. It is sitting right in the middle on both the uh, forward and back side of the gear and up and down on the, uh, the depth and the shallowness. Depth and shallowness, that works. Uh, that's on both the coast and the drive side, which means, whoa, that was real bright. Which means everything looks like it is perfect, which means done. I'm gonna pull up the uh, book. At the end of each of these books, they do have uh, what to look for after you paint it. So it shows kind of like uh, everything you have on there and it's looking, it's looking kind of like the uh, these up here. I think that's a wrap. Just route the air hose, the airline, and this guy is done. <sighs> Wait, that means I could bolt it underneath my Jeep now? And the rear one's already done? Now just the steering. That should be the easy part. <laughs> we'll find out. If you guys liked the video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to see you guys all next time.